Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to this edition of Quest Walkthrough for quest number four. Uh, so let's go. Let's solve this by elimination. Uh, we want to add these together, but uh, you know, if I add these together right now, I'll get negative 3x plus 7x is 4x, and uh, 7y plus 3y is 10y, and negative 11 minus 13 is negative 24, and what good does that do me? The answer is no, no good. Doesn't do any good. What you want to have happen is for x to go away or y to go away because they're opposite each other. And that way you'd have an equation that was like, uh, you know, if it was 10y equals negative 24, well, that's solvable. But because there was an x and a y in that, it didn't really help us. So, and I, I saw quite a few of you seem to remember you're supposed to add, but you forgot why you were adding these equations together to get them to cancel out. To get them to cancel out, you have to get these guys or these guys here to be opposite each other somehow. If I were to multiply both sides of this equation by 7 and both sides of this equation by 3, let's see what happens. 7 times both sides of this equation, we get negative 21x plus 49y equals negative 77. And the second equation, 21x plus 9y equals negative 39. Now when we add these together, negative 21x plus 21x is 0. There's just nothing there. And now when we add 49y and 9y, we get 58y. Negative 77 minus 39 is negative 118. Or sorry, negative 116. And when we divide by 58 on both sides, we get y equals negative 2. So now we know the y part of the solution is negative 2. Now that we know that, we can plug it in for y here, or the other equation, if you like that better. Negative 2 equals negative 13. So uh, 7x minus 6 equals negative 13. We add 6 to both sides. 7x equals 7, sorry, negative 7, divided by 7. Negative 7 divided by 7 gives us an x of negative 1. So negative 1, negative 2. Okay, we can use substitution or elimination. I like elimination, so I'm going to use elimination. Uh, if I add these together, look, it's just already set up for me. It's very, very ideal because x minus x is 0, so it's already canceling out. 2y minus y is y, and this couldn't be easier. y equals 4. Now I know what y is for. So let's plug that in here. x plus 2 times 4. Uh, that's x plus 8 equals 9. Subtract 8 on both sides, and x is 1. All right, again, using elimination. Uh, let's see what happens when I try and get these to cancel out. How about if I multiply this by a 2 on both sides, because then I'll get a 10x and a negative 10x. So that gives me, actually, I'll put it right underneath here, 10x uh, minus 10y equals 4. Now look what happens. We, we add these together, you get 0x, just like we wanted, but then you get 0y, so you get 0 on the left side. And then negative 4 plus 4 is also 0. Okay, so the, the, the short story, long story short here, is that this is true, and so that tells us that we have infinite solutions. If you wind up canceling all of the, the variables and the other side, and everything is 0 equals 0, or 2 equals 2 even, as long as it's a true equation, with no variables left, uh, then it's infinite solutions. If it was false, it would be no solutions. Here's why, though. This is why it has infinite solutions. Take a look at this equation and this equation. They're the exact same equation. This is just this equation multiplied by a negative 1. Multiply this by a negative 1, uh, you get a 10x. Multiply this by a negative 1, you get a negative 10y. Multiply this by a negative 1, you get 4. They're the exact same equation. And the two exact same equations are going to have the exact same solutions. Okay, so if one solution works in this equation, it's going to automatically work in this other equation. And that's what a solution to a system is. It's a, uh, an x comma y that works in both equations at the same time. And since they're both identical, they have all the same solutions. So there's infinitely many of them. Uh, solving again by elimination. So this one's uh, you know, testing your ability to rearrange the equation a little bit before you start. To rearrange this equation, uh, I would like to make it pretty simple and just get the x's and y's on the same time, uh, same side. So on this one, I'll subtract 7y, and just subtract 7y from both sides. 
Some of you had stuff like 6x plus 7, well, like you just, as if you could just slide this over the equal sign. It's, there's, there's, that's not a mathematical concept, sliding over and moving and picking up. and We have to eliminate it on one side, right? And whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. And so 6x minus 7y equals negative 15. Uh, this one, I'm going to have to subtract 4x. And if I want to keep them lined up, then I'll go ahead and uh, write it as negative 4x plus 3y equals 15. OK, so now they're rearranged so that uh, they're all lined up. X's and y's are on the same side. That keeps everything straight, so I'm not going to mess anything up here. Uh, I'll just go ahead and get the x's to cancel out. So I'll multiply this by a 2 and this by a 3. And these will be a positive and negative 12x. So that gives me a 12x minus 14y equals negative 30. This guy here is going to be negative 12x plus 9y equals uh, 45. And yeah, we get 0 here. 9y minus 14y is negative 5y. And 30, negative 30 plus 45 is 15. Divide by negative 5, and y is negative 3. So now we know y is negative 3. Now we've got to figure out what x is. Um, I'm going to use this first equation. 6x equals 7 times y, which is negative 3, minus 15. 6x equals negative 21 minus 15. 6x equals negative 36. And divide by 6 on both sides, we find x is negative 6. So negative 6, negative 3. Okay. Uh, we're going to set up this one by elimination. You're going to see why I included this question in just a second. We'll multiply both sides by 3. I'll just bring that guy right here because I don't even need to do anything to this equation. 3x, okay, and minus 3y, good. 3 times 2, that's 6. Well, look, this something very similar is happening here as happened here at this number 3. But what's happening here is negative uh, 3x plus 3x is 0. 3y minus 3y is 0. On the other side, it looks different because negative 1 plus 6 is 5. 0 equals 5 is not true. It's very false. Okay, so what's happening here is the left sides of the equations are identical, right? They're just. Uh, multiplied by a negative, okay, no big deal there. But the other side is different, right? So there's, there's no way that I'm going to be able to uh, put in an x and a y here and get negative 1, put in the same x and y here and get 6. If I put the same x and y here, I would, if these were the same equation, they would get, come out to be a positive 1 since everything multiplied by a negative. It's just there's no x and y that's going to work here and then also work here. An x and y that'll give us a negative 1 in this equation, same x and y going to give us a 6 in this equation. It's just not going to happen. So there are no possible solutions. All right, number 6, we're going to solve this one by graphing. All right, so let's just run through how we graph, and then I'll explain why that finds the solution. So a y-intercept of negative 3 is slope of negative 2. So it's going to go to the left 1 and up 2. It's going to go to the left 1 and up 2. I'll just keep following this slope so I can hopefully draw a semi-straight line here. Okay, uh, This guy's a y-intercept of 2, a slope of 1 half. So uh, over 2 and up 1 and coming back the other way. To the left two and down one. And you can see how when I followed the slope down, like to the left two and down one, I landed right here. That's a point I also got when I was graphing this line. So what do we have here? Well, remember that a graph is just a picture of all this, the possible solutions, right? So we graph this one first. So if I were to plug in, uh, let me try and get a good should have gone through, say, this point if I was drawing a nice straight line. All right. We can fix it a little bit. Clean it up. So here's a point that's on this graph. It's at 2, negative 7. 2, negative 7. Since it's a part of that line, uh, that line is made up of all these points, and these points represent solutions to this equation. So what I'm saying is this y and this x should make this equation true. Negative 7 
equals negative 2 times 2 minus 3. Negative 7 equals negative 4 minus 3. Yeah, negative 7 does equal negative 4 minus 3. But 2, neg two and negative 7 is not going to work in this equation. It's not on this graph. But this point is on this graph, so it works in this equation. It's also on this graph, so it works in this equation. So this x and y, negative 2, comma 1, will work in this equation and this equation. Try it yourself and find out it's true. Uh, let's see, yeah. Number 7. So the question is, is this a solution to both systems, or to the system, to both equations? All we have to do is plug it in and find out. Right? So if I put uh, y is 4 and x is 10, well, 10 minus 6 is 4, so yeah, that's pretty clearly correct. This one's a little bit more involved. 4 equals 8 times 10 minus 76, so that's just 80 minus 76. 80 minus 76 is 4, so yeah, so check and double check. So the answer to this would be yes, it is a solution to the system. All right, so now we're going to use substitution. Notice this equation tells me what x is equal to. x and 3y minus 8 are the same. They, quote, weigh the same. Okay. Uh, so if they're the same, then I should be able to take 3y minus 8 and put it in place of x, because x and 3y minus 8, according to this equation, are the same thing. So if I replace x with 3y minus 8, Let's see where that brings me. Distribute the 4. We get 12y minus 32 minus 6y equals negative 26. 12y minus 6y is 6y minus 32 equals negative 26. Add 32 to both sides. 6y equals uh, 6. Divide by 6, y is 1. Almost there. Substitution is kind of nice because you're really close to being done when you have, say, y, because this equation already says x equals 3 times y minus 8. So then we just get 3 minus 8. That's negative 5. So x is negative 5. Negative 5, 1 is the solution to that system. All right, so here we have an equation that we want to solve. Remember, do not multiply these together. It doesn't say to multiply them together. Multiplying them together is not a helpful way to solve this equation. Okay, we're using something called a zero product property here. Okay, and that basically says that if two things are multiplied together and you get zero, then you know A is zero or B is zero. Okay, and here we have like a, a quote unquote A, right? It's really a big parentheses of stuff, and this is like B, and I realize there's a B in the parentheses, and now I'm saying that it's a B, right? This is like a, a different B. We could say X and Y, quote X and quote Y. The thing that we know is, like, this one parentheses is a zero. Because the only way to get zero is to multiply zero by this other number to get zero, right? Instead of seeing this as, like, four different things, one, two, three things, four things, we see it as two things, a set of parentheses and another set of parentheses. So we know this has to be 0. 0 times this number, whatever it is, will come out to be 0. So we know that's true. But you might be thinking, well, that's not necessarily so. What if, what if this was 0? Then this wouldn't have to be 0. Because whatever this is would multiply by this 0, and you'd get 0, and you'd be right. So we have to set that up, too. Maybe this is 0 instead. But other than that, there are no other possibilities. So b minus 7 has to be 0, which means b is 7 when we add 7 to both sides. So b equals 7. That's one of the solutions. Add 3 to both sides, I get 5b equals 3. Divide by 5, I get b equals 3 fifths. And so that's the other solution, b equals 3 fifths. But that's it. Those are the only two solutions, the only possibilities. Okay, here we want to find the difference. We're going to subtract this stuff from that stuff, right? There's a negative 1 there that we essentially have to distribute, okay? I'm not going to write all of this again, uh, but I, I'll go ahead and keep in mind that I'm multiplying this by a negative 1. So 4x cubed minus 8x cubed is negative 4x cubed, okay? That's all the x cubed terms. 
3x squared minus a negative 12x squared, but well, that's 3x squared, plus 12x squared. So that is 15x squared. Um, 2 minus negative 13, that's 2 plus 13. So there's a plus 15 there. And notice we have this minus 6x, right? That just didn't have any like terms to combine with, so it's still just minus 6x. Uh, next, we're going to write this polynomial so that it decreases from left to right. The, the polynomial, the exponents decrease from left to right. The highest exponent is 6, so that'll be first. Next highest exponent is 5, so we'll write that one next. Next highest exponent is a 1, right? 4x to the 1 power. And then lastly, we have something that doesn't even have an exponent on it, so that's last. Find the degree. The degree, remember, is the highest exponent, the greatest exponent, the largest exponent. And the largest exponent here is 3, so it would be a third degree. Or degree 3. You could just write 3 and that'd be correct. Solve this equation so much like, but even easier than, number 9. Either x minus 9 equals 0, or x minus 6 equals 0, which means x equals 9, or x equals 6. Those are the only two possibilities. You could try it yourself. Plug 9 there, 9 there, you get 0 times 3, that's 0. Plug in 6, 6 minus 9, that's negative 3, times 0, 6 minus 6 is 0, and again, you get 0. Right, we're going to find the product. Remember, square means to multiply something by itself, and that something is the set of parentheses. Uh, so don't just do t squared minus 4. Make sure you write the parentheses down twice, and then multiply. So t times t is t squared t times negative 2 is negative 2t. Negative 2 times t is negative 2t again. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Now negative 2t minus 2t is negative 4t. So just combine like terms. Uh, find this product. So just make sure to multiply everything by everything else. So 2y, actually I'm going to go with the other way. I'm going to go with y times 2y squared and get 2y to the third. Now y times 6y, that's 6y squared. And y times 3, that's plus 3y. Now the negative 12, I'll switch colors. Negative 12 times 2y squared, that's negative 24y squared. Negative 12 times 6y is negative 72, negative 72y. And negative 12 times 3, that's negative 36. So when we combine like terms, there's only one of these y cubed, so 2y cubed. We have a 6y squared and a negative 24y squared, that's negative 18y squared. 3y minus 72y is negative 69y, and negative 36. We're going to find the product, so we're just going to multiply these guys together. We're going to get 7x times 7x is 49x squared. 7x times negative 5 is negative 35x. 2 times 7x is 14x. And 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. So we have 49x squared. And we got 14x minus 35x. That's negative 21x. And we got a minus 10. Okay, just two more questions here. Uh, multiply these together exactly the same as what we just saw up here. 5x times 3x is 15x squared. 5x times negative 4 is negative 20x. 4 times 3x is 12x. And 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. 15x squared. Negative 20x plus 12x is negative 8x. And minus 16. Okay. Uh, and last but not least, we have a special kind of a product. Uh, something nice happens when we multiply these together. Let's see what that is. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times negative 3 is negative 6x. And right after that, look, we're going to do 3 times 2x. That's a positive 6x. See, there's that special thing that's going to happen right there. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Negative 6x plus 6x is nothing, 0. 
So 4x squared minus 9 is my final answer. All right, that's it. Uh, again, thank you for watching, and let me know if you have any questions or need any help.